Hey. Welcome to the Dr. G Show. Yes, who's back? She's back. I told you guys last week she would be back. He decided that he started liking me again. Like, I don't know. I, I just don't have control over these things. After, I'm just being myself. After 5 o'clock, the door downstairs is locked. And so she's always, like, texting. I'm like, nope, she's not on the show tonight. Got too much attitude. I got, <laughs> I got words in front of my face again. I told you that was our contract. I know. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> so, um, uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. There's Ellen on, Tim Hodges, too. Um, so, this is episode 128. That's now, Tim Hodgson. Hodges. What did I say? Hodges. Oh, Tim, yeah. Tim, it's okay. I, Hodges. I care about your last name. Like, I care about my own last name. He knows I... His name is similar to my last name, which is why it stands out for me. Hodges. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, Dr. G Show, right? Uh, episode 128, Food is Medicine Part 2, and we have Dr. G in the boss, Holly Hajjajaja. How's it? The, I just stopped reacting to that at all, because the joke is so like, old. Hydrogenated? <laughs> Hajjajanated. Hajjajanated? <laughs> I think that's right. So, uh-huh. I'm going to flip this around. Oh, oh, crap, no, I messed something up. There, man. Hi. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Are you guys still with us? Okay, I'm not going to mess with anything. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's right here. It's right here. Okay, just a second. Just a second. The, we do this. That's better. And then we do this. But then, then oh, perfect. Do that. Okay, perfect. And then we do that. All right. Now the words are in front of his face. So when we're doing the video, I, you guys, the, the, the your guys' stuff comes up on half the screen, and... It always comes up on her side, so she can't see herself while I, we're doing the video. I told him I wanted to narcissistically be able to look at my face. That's right. See? I feel like an overworked... I use the word hag, but, you know, The whatever. first time she fell in love was when she looked in the mirror. <laughs> so last week we talked about food as medicine, and we really talked, like, for an hour all about uh, heart disease. Who's we? I did not watch this show. You mean you and the audience, me and a or few, did you have a, me and a co-host? Few hundred, me and a few hundred people. <laughs> did you? No, have... I didn't have any co-host. Thank you, last, Ellen. Last week was like my Valentine's Day. This is coming up <clears throat> all alone. So in yoga, <laughs> uh, Terra Soul Yoga, we're having this kind of like Valentine's Day thing for yoga, and they're like, "Does everybody have a partner?" And I don't. Hi, Edna. So, hey, I'm seeing. Edna. I'm not celebrating Valentine's Day. Really. I mean, I'm going to celebrate it with my mother. Your mother? Who's, who's lovely. We'll yeah. probably watch some old classic movies together, but That's... I won't celebrate it on the actual day. I should what find somebody's fur? mom to celebrate it with, too. There's too... <laughs> <laughs> There's too many expectations for Valentine's Day. I don't think you should set yourself up with a bunch of expectations That's about why that I'm... day. That's why I'm opting out, too. That's why. <clears throat> not buying into the system. Right. It's not because I'm in love. putting line in the pockets of the greeting card, folks. So, Dr. G and the Boss, Holly Hajjajaja. A couple of cynics. Who's the director of corporate wellness at the YMCA. Is that right? Yes. Pretty dope. So, do you know anything about food as medicine? (laughs) I know. I was hoping you could tell me. Well... I, you were paying attention in the classes that I gave you on it, right? That's right. There's Michelle, Shyla. So well, there's some new names. Yeah. Hello, hello. We don't know each other yet. I know Michelle. I no, I don't know them. She's a vegan. So look, I'm. Can you see that? Sweet. And, oh, hey, look. This is me, sweet and spicy. So this tea is pretty freaking amazing. Like it's really good. So. It's sweet. And spicy. And sweet and spicy. I'm sweet and spicy. And that's really interesting. <laughs> Shut it down. Great, okay. great show, Dr. G. Great show. So last week we talked about that heart disease is not caused by cholesterol. I'm going to be sassy tonight because I haven't been back in a while. Are you guys interested in this at all? Yes. <laughs> they wanted a part two. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. A hell, I was, okay. I'm gonna be like, oh hell no! Well, okay. Why? Why do you want? What do you want to talk yeah. about? Did you want to talk about something? <laughs> no, I'm just, 
I'm just making it interesting. <laughs> All right, fine. So. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is what we do. This is what we do. And actually, a big part of what I do is help to help people to work towards disease prevention. Shiva says she's spicy. She's so spicy. And sizzle. Muy caliente. Este es muy caliente. That's good. Better to be spicy than bland. <laughs> so, okay, so it is, it is a good topic. I was just giving you heck. Well, they For don't. Fun. They don't like when you give me crap. They like when I give you crap. <laughs> That's the way it works. No. So, all right. So Valentine's Day, we're talking about the heart, though. Remember, we did that oh, before. Oh, that's that's See? right. That's right. We have we've done this before. That's all right. right. Good so call. So we talked about the heart last time. We got a bit all prepped Good up call. for Valentine's Day. It is very relevant. Yes. That's right. So, um, so we want to talk about kind of eating your way out of hypertension, maybe uh, eating way out of blood clots. Hi, Linda. Uh, balancing cholesterol with food, but really you don't have to, we'll talk a little bit about that, but you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, we might talk about uh, eating your way out of cardiovascular markers. What are you guys interested in? What do you want to know about? Exactly what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, ain't the... Dr. G can read everyone's minds this, on the other side of the phone. This, is a, this ain't the public show. <laughs> This is how we serve our audience's needs. I know. All right. So, yes. Okay. What do you guys want to hear? And again, just like always, you guys direct this. If you guys want to go different directions, we can do that. You can be backseat driving. I don't mind. Right? What do you not already know about? Yeah. Or what have you forgotten? A lot of times coming on these shows is really great and doing them because it you forget a lot of this. Or at least I do. You forget a lot of things and need to be reminded. Yeah. Well, yeah, and especially like, uh, you know, it's weird because we talk about it all the time, talk about it all the time, but, you know, it's it's still kind of like groundbreaking when you talk about the idea that like inflammation is what causes heart disease, not cholesterol, and you can eat your way out of disease, and you can eat away clots and those kind of things. Um, it's still pretty new information, even though, or like, you know, it's still relevant all the time because like one out of two people have heart disease in the U.S., one out of two has cancer. One out of two has uh, diabetes. So, how do we dissolve those clots in our hearts and in our souls? So, the clots are caused Locked. by the devil. <laughs> and so, all you gotta do is get some Jesus up in your heart, and it dissolves the clots. Heart clots. That's right. So, clots are just so you have this inflammation, and then you have these clots. What causes them? Inflammation. How's that for a Is it only inf inflammation or does the blood get thickened somehow mm. and it starts coagulating and mm. tell me more. Yes. Okay. So there's a couple ways. With clots, you can have one that develops in the, the blood or you can have one that kind of breaks off and becomes like a embli, right? Ah, like a piece of um, blocked cholesterol a piece of cholesterol that breaks off well a piece of placking that's placking. oxidized ldls because so that could be to one patch clot. the damage of the arteries because we have an inflammatory diet i was thinking of the blood clots but go ahead yeah so blood clots so like let's say you have a um, a change in your artery and it changes the flow to where there's like a little uh circular flow then it can coagulate there and then that once it uh, goes free and it becomes a clot so clots are usually made by fibrinogen uh, or fibrin, and fibrin is what makes up scar tissue. So it's kind of like liquid scar tissue, if you will. And then that fibrin makes like a little webbing of like, say, cotton, uh, and then it traps platelets and other cells in there, and then it becomes a, a formed clot that then travels through your blood. And it's all good until it gets to a blood vessel that's too narrow, and then it gets stuck. What causes the excess fibrin? Inflammation. So it, it's a byproduct of inflammatory cytokines or pro, uh, um, prostaglandins. Mm. Okay. So something as simple as like when we talked about like people eat 40 times the inflammation as a anti-inflammatory fatty acids. So like omega-6 versus omega-3, free range versus wild caught uh, versus grass-fed, grass-finished versus corn-fed everything, right? So with that, that 
40 times inflammatory is then going to have repercussions. So you have all this kind of inflammation and for some people it's going to be achy joints, some people it's going to mess up their brain, some people it's going to mess up uh, um, uh, their heart and they'll, they'll end up with the scar tissue and then some of that scar tissue can break off and become embolized. Sometimes it just creates uh, uh, scar tissue that's kind of in the blood is clots, mm -hmm. just straight clots. And so that's where like when we look at like Zha Zhang University, they said uh, green tea bus clots. So green tea is a fiber, fibrinogen, no fibrolytic uh, enzyme property. So it has that property. And so every time someone drinks green tea, that's literally green tea. What? I just heard a clot bus. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Can you green tea your way out of a bad diet and lifestyle? Can you supplement mm. your way with fish oil and mm. green tea? Can you eat whatever you want and at the end of the day yes, just that, douse yourself with ginger, turmeric, <laughs> fish oil? No. No, well, again, everything tea. for like heart disease and stuff, you know, it's this much inflammation versus this much busting up clots and, and knocking down inflammation. So if your diet is crappy, but it's like here and you have a lot of uh, clot busting properties, then you're fine, right? So when we look at other countries and we demonize certain foods and stuff, we'll look at other countries and be like, well, they eat this and they smoke and they do that. But they have so much uh, uh, clot busting, scrubbing the arteries, deplacking diets that they can do that damage. So we, we need a good cardiac risk ratio. That's right. There, of good, of, of anti-inflammatory to inflammatory. That's right. Now Edna has asked, what causes the inflammation, Doctor? Did you say Edna? <laughs> Edna. I thought you really. I thought you were actually an insurance company. That would be appropriate as well. Blue Cross Blue Shield is on the line here, <laughs> and they're saying, what is heart disease? So, uh, what causes what? what causes inflammation. A, inflammatory diet, right? So and, you have, and lifestyle, right? Stress. Right. So, you have two things. Is you have one, you consume things that are inflammatory, and if you consume more inflammation than anti-inflammatories, then you have sustained inflammation. The other is oxidation. So, like when we talked about... Uh, advanced glycolation end products from type 2 diabetes or high sugar diets or those vegetarians that are really sugar-tarians, um, they end up with too high of blood sugar. That then causes advanced glycolation end products and, and oxidize. So you get all these reactive oxidized species that then cause that damage. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can do it by eating more inflammation than anti-inflammation or not eating enough antioxidants for the oxidation that's being caused in the body. Yeah. And either way, that causes that inflammation inside the blood vessel cardiovascular system. Also, probably not enough B vitamins because like B12 decreases homocysteine by 50%, B6 decreases by 50%, and through the homocysteine cycle, uh, homocysteine will build up and actually damage arteries that leads to that placking if people don't have enough B12 and B6. Tell, can you tell the audience what homocysteine is? Well, cysteine, uh, cysteine went to the XY club and then it was like party and then it met this guy and thought it was a buddy and it turns out that buddy was gay and then they became gay and then homocysteine, or cysteine became homocysteine. Is that, that doesn't sound right. You know. <laughs> no, maybe that's not the way it went. <laughs> And then he changed his whole lifestyle. Sometimes I think we're going to have a legitimate show, and then things like this happen. Hmm. <laughs> have you watched the show before? So uh, homocysteine... I started this train wreck. What are you talking about? Homocysteine is a product of S-acetylmethionine converting to S-acetylhomocysteine Can you... through the folate pathway that makes... <laughs> Homocysteine. So homocysteine is a marker right. it's of a cardio, inflammation. A true cardiovascular marker, not cholesterol. Countries with high cholesterol have 70% less heart attacks. Countries like America where we lower cholesterol below 200, we have higher risk of heart attack. But we still need to somehow consider that cholesterol can be, even though it is a symptom, it is not a cause, 
do we still think that a low HDL to a high LDL can mm. still be a problem? All right. I'm here to challenge you, All right. Dr. G. Balance of good <laughs> cholesterol with better cholesterol, yeah. So if we had a high LDL, or the, what they say is the bad, um, that could also be a marker of inflammation. No. no, because LDLs, as you know, with cholesterol, you have three LDLs, or sorry, three HDLs. Three high density lipoproteins. They're not even really cholesterol, but three HDLs. So a high density think of protein, low density think of fat. So it's mm -hmm. uh, this chylomicron, which is basically a bubble, and uh, it sucks up the fat. And so the fat, if it's a whole bunch of protein in there, a little bit of uh, fat, that's a high density lipoprotein. Those actually protect the heart, but you have H1, H2, H3, and H1, H2 are not as cardio protective as H2, I believe. H1 and 3 are not as protective as H2. So even the HDL can give a false impression of, of cardiovascular prevention. But really, if you have over 55, you're going to be good anyways. People that have 70, 80, like, that's awesome. Yeah. Right? I mean, I see, like, in a lot of our, we do biometric screenings, and so we do finger oh, sticks well. and things like this out at companies. <laughs> and so I see a lot. But this is not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> and so I see a lot of numbers, and it's it's kind of crazy. Sometimes we'll I'll see that blood sugar might be managed, um, or and or maybe triglycerides, but we'll see like really low HDLs, a lot of low HDLs. Yeah, because there's no meds for HDLs. HDLs is straight up lifestyle. <clears throat> you gotta get gangster with it, which means you have to actually walk. And we said the average American walks about 2,500 to 5,000 steps, where the average European is 10,000. So we're not moving. We don't do anything. So there is no reason to upregulate HDLs to protect us because we're not moving enough to protect us. Do you guys know what we're talking about in terms of HDL? Yeah. For those of you who don't know HDLs and LDLs, there's probably some of you who are pretty savvy and may have gotten your numbers, or um, this is just interesting to you, and so you know about it. Um, You're always connecting with people. Huh? I That's do. Good. I do try to connect with people. Have your guys as doctors told you that you're going to die if you have low <laughs> HDLs or high LDLs? Yeah. So tell us about. I know we kind of skipped to cholesterol right quick, but and maybe we're going down a rabbit well, hole. Well, wait. Let's let's do the LDL part though. Okay. Because the LDL part, which they call bad cholesterol, because we believe that uh, <clears throat> God made bad cholesterol to kill Americans because He hates our freedom. Right. We, we have more and more heart disease, right? Because we get more and more freedom. The more freedom we have, the more heart disease we have. But if you go to Europe, we all know those socialists ain't got no freedom, right? They're not like Americans. I think God made you to kill people with sarcasm. <gasps> That's my language. So, uh, with LDLs, LDLs are low density mm. lipoprotein, so they're more fat than protein in that. Fatty, right? fluffy, sticky. Nice. Well, not sticky, because the LDLs, you have two different types of LDLs. Hey, there's Scott Spradlin. Scott. Hi, Scott. Hi, Stacy. Scott Spradlin's going to come out with uh, ADHD TV with uh, <laughs> Mariah. Really? And all I could That's think not about. A joke. No, seriously. H it's on H Facebook. HDTV's cute. No, no, no. Not HD. ADHDTV. Get it? High def? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ooh, that HD ADD TV. <clears throat> so, but all I can think about is categories with it. Right? Why? Like an ADD TV. That's know. what we do all the time. We're always distracted. We go side. Oh. Side. That's how it's going to be. Are you fearing that it's going to give us competition? It is. Don't watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's going to have it on at the same time we have our show. <laughs> I know how this is. Just like, yo, uh, no, who? Yeah, uh, Tara does yoga at the same time the show, and so she can't ever come here because she has a, a, her, her thing during the time. Class. So, okay, so we're talking about cholesterol. Oh, is that what we're talking about? So I thought we were talking about ADD. I'm bringing this uh, back around. So with LDLs, <laughs> with LDLs, that low density lipoprotein. So there's two types. There's A pattern and B pattern, and A pattern actually is just as effective as HDLs to reverse heart disease. LDL, A yeah. pattern, LDL. Yeah. So someone so is it have, more dense as well? No. So uh, they're they're uh, large, like they're bigger, fluffier molecules. So, 
So that's where oh, Scott He's says. He's plugging. Scott says ADHD Live, <laughs> thriving with time. your adult ADHD. We have it on different. Okay, it's on at different times. So you guys watch. All right, ADHD Scott. TV. Um. So. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, large and fluffy. So, uh, the large LDLs are actually cardioprotective. The small, dense ones, they're the ones that repair the cardiovascular tissue. So, again, it is not cholesterol, not the repair things that's the problem. It's the constant damage to, like, homocysteine, uh, cardio C-reactive protein, highly inflammatory 40 to 1 ratio diets, like a, a bunch of corn Is that stuff. repair process, and we've talked about this before, that repair process, that is the patching and the building up of plaque, correct? That's correct. Okay. But the second part we're supposed to have is the smoothing out of that plaque. Which is done by the special pattern LDLs. No, that's the fibrinogen. Or sorry, that's the fibri fibrolytic enzymes like fruits and vegetables, green tea, turmeric, ginger, lysine. Which I is thought it fruits was through fish. HDL. I thought HDL scrubbed it out, scrubbed out the vessels. That's just a myth, man. That's just, <laughs> what? You're talking about a clown from you the told, 60s, man. You told me that. <laughs> He doesn't know what he's talking about. I tell you a bunch of lies, so then people <laughs> will come back here. I'll be so like, so we want crazy. a healthy lifestyle, essentially, and it's true. I will agree. Well, I think with you. the HDL. So, so the HDLs, you can say scrub the arteries because they're antioxidant. Yeah, so yeah I, I think that's probably fair to say. Yeah, it prevents okay. damage more. Okay, they're cardio protective. Cardio protective. Yeah. So uh, large LDLs and HDLs are cardio protective. Small LDLs repair. But because we cause a bunch of damage, and then we don't sand the wall back down like the rest of the countries do. HDLs, we want H for high. LDLs is L for low. I, I'm just trying to give them ways to remember. Yeah, but you want high, large <laughs> Large LDLs. LDLs. Okay. So even my patients that have like cholesterol like 300 and something, we test that at what's called a BAP cholesterol, and you look at those numbers and like they're cardioprotective. They're awesome. Okay. You know? So essentially what you're saying, Dr. G, is that if you see high cholesterol, it is not reason to go scrambling around with anxiety and um, catastrophic thinking about your health. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I always have my VAP treatment plan. And no matter what is wrong, no matter how complicated we do a VAP test, and then do that light boy fraction and AB100 and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's all upregulated. So even those genetic LPA markers are upregulated because of damage. So you can either treat that or you can stop causing the freaking damage in the first place. So, see what I'm saying? Nah, I mean. Nah, I mean. So. Does that all make sense? Are yeah. you guys following? That's, we talk I don't know. Newman. There's Newman. Hi, new Newman. Man. He's a new man. There's Jennifer. Jennifer. So, one of the things we say is, like, eat lots of fish, right? So, this Valentine's Day, for your heart and your significant other's heart, if you like them, uh, you should eat lots of fish on your date, right? So... Fish have nine completely separate ways that they reverse heart disease. So 90, or sorry, 85% of the world's population lives near the coast. They eat the fish and the plants from the ocean. They're fine. Americans consume less fish than they do coffee. <laughs> oh, I believe that. That's not even a surprise. Well, I'm glad you believe something I say now. That's <laughs> great. That's, it happens every I'm, once in a while. I feel more confident now. <laughs> so, uh... So one thing that fish does is it blocks platelet aggregation. And that's one of the big things that like inflammatory meat causes a heart attacks because it causes platelet aggregation, which leads to clots, clots, which lead to strokes. So eating wild caught fish from the ocean, wild caught salmon, tuna, halibut, mackerel, cod, sardines, uh, they block that platelet aggregation, which busts clots. Then they reduce blood vessel constriction. So 
A lot of times with stress, people that are angry, they can decrease their blood flow up to 90% by being angry all the time. So Newman's trying to talk to us right now. It's Newman saying. And he has asked if I just got back from the Grammys. And it's true, Newman, I was there. On Valentine's Day, she's going to... I didn't win anything this year, but um, I'm going to keep working at it. The Grannies or the Grammys? (laughs) The Grammys. The granny panty Grammys. The granny panty Grammys. <laughs> Who wore it best? Aunt Myrtle did. Uh, oh, I made some comment on Facebook about granny panties. Holy shit, I deleted it. Because everybody started attacking me, and I was just like, usually I'm do pretty well what with happened? my comments. Were, oh, you made, were you making fun of them? I was. I was just like, I... I People should not wear granny panties, and and the same thing with the. If you got a choice, all I gotta onesies, say, they should wear onesies. Ladies, and, am I right? <laughs> all I gotta say oh is if you have a choice between wearing something <laughs> like this <laughs> and wearing granny panties, I'm gonna choose the granny panties. Comfort. I know. That but is what. Comfort. I'm talking about the ones that like go over your belly button and they're all <laughs> loose and stuff. I don't know. Right. So anyways, I like made a comment and then everybody had a filled day talking down to me about you should just love a person for who they are and all this. <laughs> and I was just like, all right. Yeah, shallow hell. I know. I deleted it. Okay. But there's okay. stuff people wear. Everybody has something that, like I, if I was a woman, I wouldn't date no guy that wears tidy whities. I would just be like, I'm sorry. We got to break oh, up. What? That is your deal breaker. The tiny white, the you ones that go above the belly. You are never going to have a relationship if that uh, is your deal breaker. It's just gonna be single. Uh, I don't. Know. Uh, I don't okay. Know. So S- see. So this is why I'm spending Valentine's Day. How do you, with do, how two do you cats, even define granny? Two cats. <laughs> two cats. How do you define They're granny? They're those baggy pants? underwear that are way too big for people. The baggy ones. They should fit. Your underwear should fit. Yeah, I don't care if they're like the normal ones, but they're snug. But like, I don't know. That the ones that hang down below the. Yeah, that's no. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get in trouble. You're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, I love women for who they are, and, and uh, including okay. granny pants. Okay. So, fish. Uh, Back to fish. Reduces blood pressure constriction. So we said anger decreases your blood flow by ninety percent. You said that? anger anger decreases your blood flow by 90% it How constricts so? your arteries like that yeah that's why 40% of all heart attacks are during bouts of anger <gasps> i know um it's time to go to anger management class mhm that's why i don't get angry <laughs> my my blood vessels are like like that <laughs> Wide open. And sometimes, because I, I used to be like, mm, mm, kind of grunting all the time. And I'd be like, no, nah, I'm going to have a heart attack. Can't do that. Well, so. I wonder what the mechanism is that makes it, why it can help constrict. So probably the stress chemicals? Yeah, epinephrine, norepinephrine, yeah. I wonder what different chemicals you make based on different emotions. Ooh. We should do a show on that. We should. Uh, do you make different chemicals with sadness? Yeah. Or and anger yeah. and love. Yeah. yeah. That'd be interesting. So then it increases blood flow. So fish. For yeah, fish. So for men who have erectile dysfunction and women that have erectile dysfunction too, uh, they decrease the blood flow to their JJ or to their penis, and then same thing, the blood flow to the heart, and then uh, you can't perform a Valentine's Day. So, be eat some fish. lots of fish. And then it lows, lowers fibrinogen, which is the thing that allows uh, for fibrin to clot. It increases fibrolytic activity, so it busts clots. Um, eating fish, wild-caught fish, busts clots. But Dr. G, yes, ma'am. I talk with people who hate fish and or are vegan or vegetarian. Oh, that's because they're Americans. They're not pescatarian. <laughs> what do you say to those folks? I'll see you at your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, green tea, fruits and vegetables, 
So they, so, they do the same thing. Do omega threes do the same thing as fish? Yeah, but that's fish. That's fish. No, I don't know. Yeah, that you've got chia seeds and flax seeds and. And there's so you know the, so those are what are called five lox enzyme blockers. So they decrease inflammatory properties, especially downregulating cardiovascular inflammation. Um, but again, you really want the whole fish. I guess if you didn't like fish, you could take fish oils, but you're only getting a part, part benefit, but it's a good part benefit. You get more from... Eating whole fish? Yeah. yeah. Um, you mean you, like, get more milligrams or whatnot from eating the whole fish? Right, because it's more of just than that, that one property. So, like, bonito fish can lower blood pressure, right? So, the people buy bonito fish that are dried, and then they shave them into little flakes, and then you eat the flakes. Okay. Yeah. So, Dr. Weil... Yeah? I posted, um... That dude's bunk. He doesn't believe he in says kombucha. Everything, he says everything you say. Well, on he, this video, he said everything that you say. But well, he he's did, just a copycat on me. <laughs> but he did. He was actually one of the forerunners for functional medicine, just so you know. I know. So, um, no, he said uh, in terms of fish, sockeye salmon was a good one. Oh, hell yeah. You can't yeah, farm it. He said you, they don't. They, you can't farm it because of what it eats. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is the darker, the redder the meat, the more antioxidants there are to reverse disease. So sockeye is red, and it's yeah. red because it eats crustaceans that have zeaxanthin, uh, and so then it builds up the, all that zeaxanthin, and then and you it get eats rid of your small body. things, not big things. So yeah, it's not the chances of like mercury and yeah stuff like that poisoning. Um, am I right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Salmon's a low, low mercury one for sure. So no, that's true. <clears throat> what kind of fish do you guys like? Uh, they don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you eat. There's only a couple of patients that are like, "Oh, we love fish." I don't say tilapia or tilapia. Do you get mad at you? Garbage. It's all disease and inflammation. Yeah. So what kind of fish do you guys like? See, I'm mansplaining it. I just took what you did and I said it in a man voice. <laughs> I can make my voice low. What kind of? All right, maybe not as maybe not as Doctor G annoying. <laughs> so then the other thing it does is lower triglycerides, but mainly because it's low glycemic. It raises. How do we? Sorry, I'm interrupting. What? How do we lower tr triglycerides? Triglycerides are triglycerol, so it's three sugars bound to one fatty acid. So it's not a measure of fat, like a doctor. A lot of doctors will. Uh, postulate, but it's actually a measure of sugar, converting to fat. So if you consume too much sugar, then you make a whole bunch of triglycerides to convert to fat. And um, so... I've heard or calories in general. Eat low glycemic. Yeah. Yeah. And then it raises antioxidant-rich HDLs. Yeah, so if your triglycerides are high, it will decrease your fish, HDL. nuts, and movement. Fish nuts and movement. Talk about movement. That's what I'm going to be doing my webinar on dang, tomorrow. God that's all you ever talk about. <laughs> he just doesn't She's like when I come of... on because we have to talk about exercise. You're always exercise. Everybody knows that. That's like talking about quitting smoking. But nobody's. But a lot of people aren't doing it. Yeah. But on Valentine's Day, they'll be doing <laughs> some exercise. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Probably have a heart attack. And they'll be like, heart damn it, I should eat fish. <laughs> we made love. Part of, did you guys know that the ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine's yeah. mm -hmm. definition of cardiovascular activity is three things. Do you guys know what it is? Hmm. Do you know what it is? Increasing heart rate? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's sort of, kind of. It's movement that is rhythmic, consistent, it just sounds like sex. <laughs> and sex. done with the large muscles of the body. That's not sex. <laughs> well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. This is a Valentine's show, so we can so talk the about definition some of Valentine's, of Valentine's what show. What physical movement is sex? No, Ri no it's not sex. Like rhythmic. Cardiovascular exercise? Yeah. Rhythmic, consistent, and done with the large, body, large muscles of the body. What if it's awkward, embarrassing, <laughs> and sweaty? <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> is that part of the definition? Uh, but this is really great because that should widen your opportunities for physical activity. Okay, so it, for physical activity, for lowering heart disease and 
I get this is about food as medicine, <laughs> not movement as medicine. Okay, okay. So wait, say, so they need to make sure that what? They are rhythmic, so it's like walking, jogging, running, mm -hmm. climbing. Con consistent and done with consistent. The large. Yeah. And then what's the last one? Done with the large muscles of the body. Okay. Yeah. Not sitting and talking. <laughs> not. Jabber, jabber, jabber. Actually, the tongue's the strongest muscle in the body. <laughs> how does that, how do they even measure that? A dynometer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real thing. Yeah, okay. it's a dynometer. No, that's okay. for pain. You guys are hilarious. Who said that? I can't see your face or your name, but I really like your comment. I don't know, I think oh. that person's super cool. Oh, Tanya. Tanya. Yeah, thanks. She's super cool. <laughs> Anybody We've that thinks viewers, we're super though. cool is super cool. Super cool with us. Yeah. So then with uh, fish on, on your Valentine's Day, it increases cell membrane flexibility, and that helps in the bedroom. It is not all about the bedroom. What? But what does cell membrane flexibility help with? <sighs> so it makes your blood vessels more pliable, so that they are less likely to tear or rupture during anger and hypertension. <laughs> yeah. So, and exercise. Yeah. So think of a hose that's been left out in the sun. <laughs> what are the hose at night? <laughs> One day we'll have a legitimate discussion. So it the hose out in the A dip. garden hose. <laughs> the garden hose. A green garden <laughs> hose that's been left out in the sun. This is akin to the blood vessels. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I see where if you're going If you with this. leave a garden hose <laughs> out in the sun. I'm sorry, we need to take an infantile <laughs> laughing break. Go for just a second. <laughs> It makes me think of like Will and Grace where they can't like say certain words or they start giggling. That's what you do. I know. Except on Will and Grace, the guy's gay and the girl's straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. All right. All right. So, once again. So, membrane flexibility. So, no, membrane the garden hose thing's a good idea. Has, I like this. Yeah. Like so, this. what happens to that when it's left out in the sun? Someone steals it. <laughs> I see where you're going. I was going to say, I really should not say that it oh, you're, gets harder still. I can't say that. So your hoe gets... Your hose. Well, hose. Your hose get harder <laughs> if they're out in the sun. I hear you. You know how your hose be getting harder out in the sun? <laughs> it makes perfect sense. This show went downhill really fast. And when that hose, when when your hose gets all He's crusty, a pun. you gotta get more hose, like a new hose. Mm. That doesn't even make sense. It's not, even, arteries, it's not working. The arteries, the the gist of the story is that the arteries will harden and narrow, like a hose left okay. out in the sun. <laughs> okay. Green garden hose. <laughs> when you leave your hose out in the. Not your hose. I <laughs> know. He's also the king of puns. So, and look, we're losing. You, we're losing viewers. You're as doing we this continue. on purpose. <laughs> okay. This is not helping people. Okay, okay we're let's not helping go on. People. Let's go on. Okay. Back to fish. So I like that example though, because everybody knows that one. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, the last thing is, it lowers blood pressure. So nine separate ways, uh, eating fish lowers your risk of heart disease so then you get to have that person longer in your life and so if you don't love that person don't let them eat fish but you eat lots of fish <laughs> you're like baby you should you deserve a burger it's like passively murdering them i know <laughs> i know i watched this awful show the other day about this black widow person that's racist it's horrifying she was poisoning she, poisoning her husbands with uh antifreeze Sorry, that was morbid, and I apologize. Is she single, though? <laughs> She's dead now. She died in prison. Dang it. <laughs> See, you can't... Another girl off the, off the market. <laughs> off the market. 
All right, so Harvard uh, did this study. <laughs> uh oh, Lauren's gonna get us in trouble here. Picante sauce, cabbage. Yeah. Oh, so fish tacos is great. I had that the other day. Korean spicy, and I use sriracha oil, which makes it really spicy. So that fish may not have a lot of flavor, but if you use sriracha oil, bam, it's flavor country. And then I put a little sriracha sauce on there. That's double sriracha. <clears throat> Muy caliente. <laughs> That's double sriracha. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresco y delicioso siempre. Muy caliente. <laughs> Okay, this is good for the heart. Thank you, Emily. Laughter. Mas guac, por favor. Is good. I don't know what that means. More guacamole. Oh, please. mas guac. Mas guac. Mas guac. Okay. Yeah, and Emily knows what she's talking about. That's we do need to laugh. I actually, okay, you laugh guys, I wasn't going to do the show tonight. She was Because wasn't. I have Hate a lot. Patrick. She hates <laughs> Patrick. That's reason number one. <laughs> but reason number two is <laughs> stop it. Is that I had a lot of work to do and mm -hmm. I was just going to keep cranking through the work because I got a webinar to do tomorrow and mm. I just but this one made me stop and I'm glad. She chose to get fired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Be on the show because she's not going to get her project done. I just needed to laugh, and yeah. this was my first break of the day. So, oh my gosh. yes, yes, Emily. I walked all the way to Delano for lunch today. I have been walking a lot. Are we going to talk about exercise again? No, this is <laughs> food is medicine. So, Harvard did this uh, study for a second heart attack, right? So, the first one that's pretty bad. Most people have silent heart attacks too. Right? So the second one though, uh, they did the study at Harvard and they found that they, they compared two things. Eating fish twice a week plus fruits and vegetables. Okay. Or the traditional low fat diet. What do you guys think? Which one per, uh, dramatically reduced second heart attacks? Fish and fruits and vegetables or just low fat? I feel like they're going to know just from the sarcastic that. Y yes. Damn it. We haven't had a lot of instant response from our questions tonight. Yeah. I can see it's been a while since I've been on the show. Oh, snap. I know I don't ask <laughs> a lot of questions. I'm just like on my soapbox, like, blah, 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 like this. <laughs> and you're always like, slow down, let's talk about, you know, yeah. So, fish twice a week? Fish twice a week. And fruits and vegetables, because those de plaque the arteries, they knock down inflammation, all that stuff. So, but here's uh, here's some of the guidelines I, I've been hearing. I'm just going to throw this out. Okay. So that even though we want to eat healthy fats, heart healthy fats, mm -hmm. some of the guidance that I have been exposed to says we should still limit the intake of that. So say, for instance, a thumb-sized serving of almond butter per meal like and so that there should be some limitation on that no absolutely not full crap so the healthiest country or say let's say the countries that eat the most fat have the least amount of heart disease and are skinny what if i just want to eat almond butter all day then you're gonna be healthy with almond butter it's high in calories. So what? If you're laying around eating almond butter, not almond, exercising, almond, you're gonna gain no, weight. You're not, because almond butter's fat is cholesterol, which makes testosterone, progesterone, anti-aging hormone, vitamin D. It's 20% of every cells in your body, and it's 80% of your brain. Well, then I should be feeling like Wonder Woman. That's right. That's where people can eat fat, <laughs> high-fat diets that are healthy and anti-inflammatory, and actually lose weight. Like the Shangri-La diet, which is mm -hmm. just made up, but I mean, it's a real thing. What is but, that? Hey, they eat spoons of fat, uh, like that coconut just sounds oil, like keto and then it satiates or... them, and then they eat less. That sounds like keto or paleo. Right, it's, it's made up. Okay. It's just silly nonsense, but it works. Okay. But you still need, you can't just eat all fat. You need a lot of fat. Just... That's why aliens are cannibals. 
like if they came to to they'd be like don't eat the Americans because they're inflammatory fat. <laughs> but they would go eat like Sardinian <laughs> they grandmas. They eat the grass fed Americans. That's right. The Sardinian grandmas, uh, man, they're they're healthy fats. Them's good fats. That's right. See? So it's not fat, but is is it inflammatory or anti inflammatory? But we're still in that kind of mentality from the 1970s where we're trying to figure out what caused heart disease, and so we just blame things. It's as far as weight loss go, and I'm just, I'm just saying this stuff to make it interesting tonight, oh. not just to disagree, not you, to disagree. You're just always disagreeing. But I will say that the precision nutrition at this training that we went oh. to. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is I thought was interesting. Yeah. It is easier for the body to convert fat to body fat, like tr- through triglycerides to body fat, than it is to, con- it takes more energy to convert sugar to fat. And so the body would rather burn sugars first. Yeah, but people are, I mean, and again, it's, it's that, it's that artificial kind of thing of like, yeah, if we didn't eat 150 pounds of added sugar, yeah, and you ate an, just an amazing amount of extra fat, maybe you'd get fat. But we're not fat because we eat too much almond butter. <laughs> we're fat because we eat way too much sugar. And that's the thing is you can't, uh, and, and that's the other part of that, is you cannot eat too much fat for the most part because fat is so satiating. Yeah. Sugar is not satiating. I will say he did, and I, I disagreed with him, not you, but I disagreed with him in, in terms of... Just he, him down? He said, well, you can't, you can't just eat sugar packets. No one does that. But really, if you add it to liquid, can, yeah. <laughs> people do. Absolutely. They eat lots of A sugar. A bottle of ketchup <clears throat> is this much sugar. Yeah. yeah. So they definitely are doing that. He was saying that people like sugar more when it's combined with fat. So they are ending, they're, they're getting a lot of added fat with junk foods as well, like the Maybe. taste of it. Yeah, sugar, salt, and fat stuff. Yeah. But anyway, sounds sketchy. Invite me to that place. I'll, I'll shut that sh- stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be like, blah 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 blah. Common sense. <laughs> no. Are you guys still out there with us? I know no. we said Shyla said it was sci-fi. lagging for her. Can you guys still see us? Well, she's using a Mac computer from 1984, so. An IBM. IBM. She's using the, the OS Pro. I don't know. Hopefully it's not lagging. Um, so one of the things is uh, moderate drinking and risk of heart disease. So my all my nurse, Sherry, who I love to death, we would constantly like be at each other about this because she's like anti-liquor because she said it causes heart disease and breast cancer. And I am like pro red wine because it reverses heart disease and prevents breast cancer. So, but she's saying liquor and you're saying wine. I know, because that's the deal. Is uh, In America where we say, like, oh, well, alcohol causes heart disease. Well, what kind? It's because we all drink beer and mixed drinks, which should. White wine and sweet wine. Yeah, those which are going to cause sugar. heart disease because they're just sugar. But if you drink red wine, that's the one that can reverses heart disease. And so you might see sporadic research here and there where it says, well, it could help increase heart disease. Great. In countries where they drink red wine all the time, do they have heart disease? No, they have the lowest heart disease. In America where we drink a bunch of beer and uh, white wine and, and sweet reds, do we have lots of heart disease? Yeah, of course. So again, it's that unfair comparison. That's a fallacy in research. Can't do that. How does she still continue to argue with you on it? Because she don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> So. so the all other alternative is if you don't want to drink red wine because no, you, you don't like to drink, drink alcohol, wine. you can you eat, have to drink you can it. eat grapes. You have to drink red wine. You can eat grapes. <laughs> There's no other alternative. You have to drink red, red wine. Grapes. I should sell red uh, wine and have a Dr. Uh, Garrett's prescription. Have a prescription label on it. <laughs> Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. So one of the things with red wine is red wine increases HDLs, moderate drinking, right? Increases HDLs. And it also decreases cardiovascular disease by 40%. 
not a big deal. The population well, why do, why too. shouldn't people just start drinking gallons and gallons of wine? They can. It's all good. I have heard that it should be moderated. Ugh. Like one to two glasses. Yeah, that's probably right. But then they the, the, they get purple teeth, and you're like, ugh, I'm not kissing you. Like, you look like you're purple middle teeth. ages. That's just judgy. I know. Oh, yeah. Granny pennies and purple teeth. <laughs> Pass it, <an> asshole. <laughs> You just gotta love her for the way that she is. <laughs> All right. Fine. And then you it, could at least say go brush those. Yeah. You know to like judge her. That's character. what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Which I love. I love this idea because it's just like I'm all judgy, and it's just like, have you looked in the mirror, Patrick? <laughs> like, there's no reasonable reason why. <laughs> You should be judging about anyone anyways. So Okay. Right. We're not this is a non judgment zone. That's right. So then Harvard did this another uh, another study and they looked at the four most important inflammatory uh, cardiovascular inflammatory anti inflammatory foods. And that was nuts, garlic, <clears throat> alcohol, and onions. Interesting. Ding. Garlic and onions are epigenetic. I love garlic. In fact, yeah. I have, I've yeah. solved some infections, some of my own infections with just garlic. Yeah. Garlic is you super You can cut it up into like little pill shapes and yeah. just yeah. take it like a pill. Yeah. I got an eye infection. I just put it right in like under, <laughs> like inside my eye. No. No, garlic's a very powerful antibiotic. Hundred bioactive, hundred bioactive chemicals against virus, parasite, fungus, and it's delicious. And I don't care what it does to the breath. Other people do. <laughs> I like the smell of my own garlic breath. You know what men use as birth control <laughs> on Valentine's Day? The personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? It's, just, it's from an old joke. I made oh. it up. I'm trying to be topical. Gar- it's Valentine's Day. Garlic to, per- to personality. Because the garlic it turns someone off because it's uh, all garlic. Oh, but right. right. That's right. right. It should be about personalities, not garlic. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we got a couple viewers. So. Please, please stay with us. One way of cooking <laughs> is called mirepoix. Now, most people watch this offline anyways. <laughs> mirepoix. Go on. Mirepoix. So, mirepoix is a uh, traditional French uh, cuisine in a way that you cook where you heat the oil up first and then you put your herbs in there and your spices warm those up then put your onions and garlic and your carrots and celery in there and then that releases all these really potent um, medicinal effects but also flavor effects of all those things then you put your food in so even if you did steak you would do it that way if you did soup or beans you would you'd always start mirepoix so with the with the four most important things from Harvard, that's where we look at say uh, garlic and onions. We would want to do those as mirepoix. So garlic and onions should just be, and a lot of people start right yeah, there cooking with that that's anyway. Yeah, so yeah. it's just a good staple, to, a good idea to always have those things on hand. And then you always eat nuts because it prevents you from going nuts. So nuts on that, especially nuts and alcohol. So you got your red wine. And you have your uh, nut butter, and it's all good. Mm, nut butters. So what about things that cause heart disease, too? Like, two easy things you can remove. One is for, uh, especially angina, which that's for Valentine's Day, right? Angina? No, that's angina. <laughs> Did you ever see that Will and Grace where... Never mind. I don't be watching no Will and Grace. <laughs> Watch those. I've been watching football. I have watched those episodes so many times. Really? Anyway. Which how's it go? Oh, Karen, the, they're in the hospital and Karen's, Karen's a hot, okay. Oh, I Karen's love. Karen's husband got that sultry has voice. a heart condition in the hospital, and the doctor tells her that it was just a little angina, and she gets <laughs> offended. <laughs> so, anyway. Karen's the hot one, right, with the sultry voice. A sultry? Yeah. She has a really high oh, no, voice. She, she does. It yeah. is high. Okay. Anyway, go on. So, <clears throat> what easy things to remove? What was that? I thought I was saying something else. But, uh, oh yeah, I was making fun of angina. So, 
alcohol, excessive alcohol, but we're talking about beer, uh, hard liquor, those kind of things, they can cause angina, which is chest pain, right? So, um, especially chemicals, like people will have arrhythmias and stuff and they're like that easy to fix. And uh, you just, you're causing it. So you just gotta remove those things. And a lot of times it's things like energy drinks, Monster, that, that kind of stuff, but even coffee. Because uh, green tea has about uh, 25 milligrams of caffeine, which makes you smarter and more alert. Black tea has 50 milligrams of caffeine. So and then, wait, I'm trying to build up the drama here. And then you, Red Bull has 85 milligrams. <laughs> Monster is 160 and then coffee is 100 to 200 milligrams. <laughs> so 85 milligrams, which is Red Bull, is where you start seeing up to 22,000 young Americans ending up in the ER every year. So we don't have to worry about that. I saw this horrible video with this kid's heart literally pounding out of his chest. Yeah. It was really horrifying. Yeah. Like, how was it even pumping through the... Like, it was pumping out of his chest, like through the ribs yeah it was horrifying yeah so no energy drinks but i was gonna say too that so just because you have your heart has a little flippity flop that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna die that day it might just be a simple fix oh yeah it a usually simple is. nutritional fix i can't tell you how many like arrhythmia patients that it's just it's gone once we figure out what's causing it, it's just gone um, but one of the funny things I had a patient that I was referred to me and he's a guy guy patients are the worst patients to ever have Although I have we a don't traffic in stereotypes on this <laughs> show, but I do. <laughs> you know stereotypes are stereotypes because they're true 100% of the time <laughs> so um, So he came and he's just like I've seen every electrophysiologist the cardiac and I've seen all these heart doctors and they all tell me there's nothing you do but just uh, burn out those SA nodes. And uh, I was just like, well, in my clinical practice, this is what I see and this is how we fix it. And he's just like, well, I've seen all these specialists and all this stuff. And so I gave him a few pointers and then he left and never came back, right? So then I was just like, well, whatever. I guess he didn't, you know, trust me at all. And um, so then I see him at this, uh, uh, thing, uh, uh, some parade, and uh, I was like, hey, and so he's like, well, guess what? Uh, I got rid of all these things that you told me to, and all my arrhythmias went away. <laughs> so he's a young dude, and he was going to get his heart ablated, and then he was like, oh, it might take two or three times to get that ablated, and you might end up with a pacemaker, but at least you won't have the arrhythmias. But he was like choking down like Red Bulls mixed with uh, alcohol. Like sip and scissor kind of stuff. Yeah. So. I don't think per, um, a person's, for a, for a lot of people, especially those that don't know this kind of stuff, I don't think their first go-to is look at my lifestyle. Mm -mm. Their first go-to is if, if the Food and Drug Administration says it's safe, I'm fine, so I'm going to go to the doctor. That's right. That's right. And then they end up skipping past the lifestyle approaches to medication and surgery and chronic debilitating issues yeah it's all chronic management three out of every four americans is just chronically being managed even with natural medicine docs like me most of it is just natural ma management right very few of us are doing what we're supposed to do which is stop causing the problem well, and the crazy thing is and it, it can be really frustrating because it because of this lack of education it, it like the solutions are so simple that mm -hmm. it's insane but we don't think simple will work mm -mm. and we don't trust simple right and we don't want to change our lifestyles that's the main thing so simplicity cures complexity sells you stuff so the more complex we can make a diet the more complex we can make your condition sound mm -hmm. uh the more likely you're buy something or, or buy into a program but really, it's just, what are you doing to cause it? I had one uh, participant, one employee that I was coaching, and she had high blood pressures. And so we talked about some lifestyle things, and I didn't know whether or not she was going to actually do them. But uh, I talked with her a month later, and all she did was start walking a couple of days a week. And she just barely reduced her caffeine. 
and her doctor said she no longer had to go on blood pressure medication. Nice. So it is just that simple. Yep. And a lot of times, yeah, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. Like our body wants to heal all the time. <laughs> it just doesn't take a whole lot. But when you start finding out like everything you eat, drink, breathe, rub on your skin and wear is just petroleum, it's like, yeah, you should have all these problems. You can't consume two to 600 milligrams of caffeine and not have anxiety all day. Mm -hmm. You should have anxiety all day, right? Your heart should have arrhythmias. You should have tachycardia, you know? It's right. Just, That's yeah. a normal response to what we're doing, yeah. the choices that we're making. I think teaching that anatomy and physiology for seven years, that really helped me because once you're just like, this is how it works, this is how it works, this is how it works. And it's just like someone that, like a mechanic, like this is teaching you how your car works. And then someone's like, you know, I've been putting like water in my gas tank and something doesn't work right. And like, well, if you know this stuff, you're just like, yeah, it's, don't do that. Right. 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 Actually, it's, I've been putting gas in my water tank. Oh, that shit just got, that's freaking real, right? Gas in my water tank. Got some styrene, benzene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly true. Okay, so you We're wasted... We're at the top a, of the hour. You wasted another hour. With <laughs> you wasted another hour. Another we got hour. through some fish, and we got through... God dang it, we spent the whole time talking about fish. <laughs> Fish and Valentine's Day, that's just, it. Thank you for the seven of you that are still with us right now. Um, I was like, it's like seven people watch it live and then 1,200 later. I was like, <laughs> they don't even get to interact with the jokes. I know. I know. That's the fun part. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow morning, I meet with OptiLife about, uh, mm -hmm. they're uh, hopefully going to sponsor and allow me to do the cooking show there with Dr. G. Cook or cooking after dark with Dr. G. So that'll be awesome. Ooh. And I just realized that all. Hi, Debbie. So, Sorry. You calm down. <laughs> I got Oh, it's Debbie Cruz. Debbie Cruz. Yeah, I know her. So, <laughs> um, so the cool thing about this, right? The concept is playing records. Making alcoholic drinks like martinis or something, Make right? Moonshine. Having a guest on, making food. So that means all my food, records, and liquor is now tax deductible. <laughs> what? What? That's the only reason he's doing. it. That's the only reason I'm doing the show. <laughs> so again, I you guys had great ideas of like different foods to make. What records should we play? Um, and what guests? We, nobody put it. At which guests we should have? I don't know. So, anyways, I'm talking to them tomorrow. Hopefully, that'll work out. And then we gotta get some food sponsors, and then it'll be on like the break of dawn. I'm gonna break it down. And like Tim says, um, we need to have uh, food as medicine part three, three because apparently we can't get past one animal. I think it's just because I'm popular. That's what the oak tree told you. <laughs> <laughs> get it? You get that? No. A popular is a type of tree. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> These are dad jokes. Oh, 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 okay. Thank you for watching, everybody. Yeah. Shameless plug. If you'd like coaching at your work site, contact me. Yep. At the YMCA. Do you have a phone um, number? We do. Oh. I Just out. YMCA, YMCA, YMCA. <laughs> and it'll take you right to it. <laughs> So you're at the downtown branch. I am at the downtown branch. It's DT. And if your work site doesn't have a wellness program, yeah. but you think that it would be helpful, contact me, Holly yep. Hajaj at the YMCA. Holly Hajajina <laughs> at the YMCA. And if you have a chronic thing that doesn't ever get fixed, you got to come see me, the guy who unbuttons his shirt down to here like Scott Spradlin. You gotta come see me chest hair. Me and Scott. <laughs> We're always working the, the V. You gotta button up. My dad was like that, but he had just a big old <laughs> chest hair like me. Like, but it, was all, it like, had its own personality. It twice, but it was all blonde, uh, gray hair. <laughs> he had a big poof, like pompadour, uh, and, and a bunch of chest hair. Oh. Yeah, so that's my hope someday. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Next week, part three. Part three. Where we talk about 
more stuff about food as medicine. Yes. Uh, post y'all's questions. Let me know if you have any questions or anything. And there's Mindy. OM Jizzle. Hi. All right. Bye, you guys.